In this video, you will learn how to build a small microservices system that has four services, a single load balancer and a three identical Node.js applications that we have built before in this video, in this channel. If you're interested to know how this is done, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein and in this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing, hit that bell icon so you get notified every time. I upload a new video, that's it, let's just jump into microservices. Okay, so this application that you're seeing right now, I'm gonna reference the code below, guys, I'm gonna stop building on this. Essentially, it's a simple Node.js application that I have dockerized, and we have talked about how exactly we did that, how we can, how we move this application into a Docker container. I'm gonna reference the video here, there, Right, I'm not gonna go through details. It's a very simple application. It's an express application. It takes an environment variable and some some rest endpoints and literally just echo back the application ID. And it's very critical to know that so we can identify which microservices are we hitting, okay? So that's essentially what it does, okay? And I'm listening always to port 9999, all right, and in the docker file, I am exposing that 9999 port, okay? And when you spin up a new docker container from that image that you have built from this docker container, you can specify which port your host can map to, okay? And we start doing this, all this goofy stuff, right? We spin it like three of these images, but every time we have to expose it to the host, which is kind of ugly. Right, because every t every communication is going through the host, right? It's like you're mapping this stuff, right? So how actually we can build all of this stuff in its own bubble microservices stuff, right? Because microservices are awesome, right? Who doesn't want their application to be to run actually slower and become harder to debug, right? Everyone want that, right? <laughs> all right, people are gonna get pissed. All right, oh yeah, so yeah, I'll save my opinions about microservices later in another video. But yeah, yeah. So what we need to do here, essentially, we no longer need to expose the port because guess what? These will be completely isolated internal containers that we, as an external entity, have no access to. What we will have access to is the load balancer that will load balance those puppies, okay? And what load balancer will we use? What is the best load balancer available out there? Eh, wrong. It's not Nginx. It's HAProxy. Okay. Again, this is subjective, but I like HAProxy better because it's just easier. Okay. Uh, all right. This, is gonna, this video is going to get a lot of dislikes. All right. So let's get started. All right. So I'm going to remove that part. I am going to change this thing. So if you provide me when you spin up this container of this beautiful image, the app ID becomes the port that we're going to listen to. So for example, if I spin up this container with 1111 as a container, as an application ID, that will be the listening port, okay? And it will just change that port. So we'll just know that, a lot, right? That's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spin up a bunch of stuff. So that's the first change we're going to do. Yeah. Once we do this change, how about we actually build this puppy, right? Build that Docker container. How do we build Docker images, guys? Docker build dash T. I don't know why it's still dash T, right? For the image name. And it's called node app and then dot, right? And it's built. So node app image is now this application. That's the first part. The second part is I have my application. How about we actually build my HA proxy container? An HA proxy container, obviously, in order to build an HA proxy container, you would need a configuration. So how about we create a folder called HA proxy? And then we inside this folder, we're gonna create an HA proxy.cfg, which means a container. Not container, the configuration for HA proxy. What is the configuration for HA proxy? Let's do a front end that is HTTP, let's call it, and then bind on port ITIT, because it's famous, right? And let's make the mode is HTTP, and let's do a timeout. We don't really need timeout, do we? But sure, timeout, 
A client timeout is 10 seconds. Bad, by the way, but sure. Use back end all. And then we're going to define a back end. We're going to call it all. And then here's the beauty part. How many services would we want to spin up? How many microservices? Remember, this the whole architecture will be spin up in its own bubble. So it's going to have its, their own IP addresses, their own host names. And we're going to craft the host names right here. And then we're going to build the actual microservices using Docker Compose, which is an awesome uh, tool. So let's do that. So server, S1, the first S server is going to call it S1. And what is the host name? We have no idea. We're going to make up names right now. Okay, I'm going to call it node app mm, one. And it's listening on port 1111. Okay. Again, we're assuming that because we don't need to build this thing. We need three of those. Okay. Three of those. S2. And it's three. Three, 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 three. And this is the host name, guys, right? So there will be a host name in the container that is called node app one. And you might say, how do you do that? We're gonna do that with Docker Compose in a second, right? So now we have the configuration. We have the HA proxy ready. We have Node.js, the image ready. Everything is ready. What's what's missing? The Docker Compose itself. So let's go ahead and create, uh, not in this folder, it's actually in the parent one. I always, ah, man, this is always a problem with this. Docker Compose.yaml, right? I gotta drag it up, right? If anyone knows how we actually go back to the root, because I have no idea, right? Every time I go back, I create a folder, it always creates in the, in the subfolder. No, never mind. So the curve compose is essentially a YAML file that you give it to Docker, compose this, this tool, which is Docker. By the way, you have to have a Docker for this tutorial. It goes without saying. And, and it takes that file and pin up everything in its own bubble of a network, internal network. And you can ask it to expose certain ports. And that's what we're interested in. Because guess what? The load balancer, which is a proxy, that's the only thing that we need to see publicly. Me as the runner of this application. So let's start this. Start with the version three. That's the first thing you do. I'm using version three, the latest and greatest of them all, okay? And then we're gonna have a bunch of services, right? And here's the cool part about this. Each service that you define becomes a host name, becomes a container that has a host name that you define. So I'm gonna create one service, one container called LB, right? That's the first container. That's the load balancer. I need another container called node app one why this is the puppy node app one that's another container right i need another one another one app two dj khaled app three look at that so we need this is these are my four services one two three four are these enough no sir because you gotta tell me this first container what it's config what the heck is it well it has an image of HA proxy, right? That's the public image of HA proxy, I, at least, right? And you need to tell me what ports do you want exposed because that's the only accessible uh, container to the outside world. So well, we're gonna do ports and then we'll do exactly like you're spinning a new container, right? I am going to use 8080, 8080, right? Is that what we used? Yes, we listened in the container and port 8080. So that's it. And I want to expose, right, port 8080 on my host. So you can change this to 80, for example, if you're fancy, right? But you just keep it. I, I want to keep it just uh, as it is. The next thing is volumes. And the volume here is actually very interesting because HA proxy requires the configuration, which we wrote. But how do we pass it along? Well, we need to actually specify the path, right? Well, where is us, which is dot slash HA proxy, that's my folder. I wanna map this folder to, to, this is fixed, user, local, user, local, Etsy, HA proxy. This 
guy, which is moi, this folder, right, which has this file, maps to this, which is a constant in the container. Sweet, that will map it up, that will pick up the configuration, hopefully we don't have any errors. It's gonna complain that we don't have timers, timeouts, but share, share. How about no adapt? No adapt, record an image. And guess what? Our image is called node app. That's exactly what we built, remember guys? Okay. Well, what else does it require, guys? It requires some environment variables, right? Because remember, we need to pass app ID, which is app capital ID, so we can listen to the port, right? So to do that, you do environment, right? And then you hit enter and then dash. Literally just do app ID equal the environment variable so in this case one 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 so that's my first node app it's going to listen to port one 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 and it's going to be identified at one 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 so if i make a get request it's going to say hey i am application id one 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 sweet guys how do i do the next well copy and paste copy and paste still the same application but this guy is two 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 and this guy same image but this guy is three 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 and guess what just like that, your Docker Compose is ready to rumble. Let's do that. So how do we actually build that Docker Compose? Well, you go to terminal and you make sure you're in the same folder and then do docker-compose up. If you run docker-compose, it's gonna look for a file called docker-compose.yaml and it's gonna run that thing and look at that beautiful stuff. Look at this, look at this. Uh, it's gonna oh it's gonna give some error errors found in configuration fatal errors what is my errors well my configuration first of all i didn't map the the mode has to be the same mode that's the first thing for sure and we have also a typo <laughs> back end all all right so so we fix the mode we fix the typo and then we go we all we have to do is essentially go here and it's always a good idea to do docker compose down so that means bring them bring them services down and then you do docker compose up let's see do we get an error oh looking good yeah it's complaining that we have timeouts sure whatever now we're listening to port 1111222233 these are floating containers and we have a beautiful ha proxy load balancer that is loading a layer seven essentially playing on the layer seven and just bouncing things how about we actually test that thing are we full of bs or actually this thing is working i'm gonna do a local host it it and then hit enter and look at that app one we got a result from app one and if we refresh right that will send a request to another J proxy that will essentially use the pool to swap to the other container and then refresh another container and so on. 333111. Three, three, so what algorithm is this called? It's called round robin. You can use IP hash, you can do sticky sessions, all that fancy stuff. How do I, uh, Hussein? Um, uh, I have a million requests. I need to spin up another container. How do we do that? Well, not hard at all. Well, sir, we're gonna spin up another, another one. DJ Khaled, another one, right? S4, we're gonna spin up an, another container. Well, we added it to the config, right? S4 is now node app four. Go back to the YAML and then to copy. And God, I hate YAML because copying and pasting doesn't actually align correctly. This is node app four that we do kill this thing and then when you kill it it's a good idea to do a detach but i like to actually see what's going on right when you stop this container it's gonna turn tear down everything and then do docker compose down baby gonna down 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 uh, what year is this uh, apparently this is not 2020 uh, no, no, no. all right we go back and then refresh do we see 4444 four, 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 sir yes we do yes we do do you see this guys is this clear enough for you do you want me to zoom further huh all right that was docker containers in whatever minutes did we <laughs> all right guys all right guys all right hope you're gonna have a nice beautiful weekend hope you enjoy this uh 
a little bit of a tutorial of microservices, right? I'm going to reference the microservice videos. There are pros and cons for microservices. You don't want to do microservices all the time. You need to understand what you're doing, obviously. Check out the microservices video. But I'm going to leave you here and see you in the next one. The code will be available in the description below, guys. Stay awesome.